Today, I want to talk about how FINRA has just been exposed, how they're trying to backpedal, and how this will cause the AMC and MMTLP squeezes. I also want to talk about how even more billionaires are selling off their portfolios before a giant crash. So stay tuned and let's make some money. So now I'll dive straight in with the key information. So, Boss Blunt's tweet is saying one individual hedge fund alone is trying to buy more than the total number of shares FINRA claims were shorted in MMTLP. So, as a bit of a reminder, FINRA has said that prior to MMTLP's delisting, there was 2.65 million shares shorted in total, a short interest of 2.65 million. Now, a few weeks back, MMTLP or Nextbridge Hydrocarbons said that actually they had had a total number of various different hedge funds approaching them to buy back more than 2.65 million shares, AK 10, 15, 20, or 25 hedge funds that all clubbed together and totaled more than 2.65 million. So that alone confirms that a significant number of synthetic shares did exist prior to the delisting. But now MMTLP and Nextbridge Hydrocarbons has come out and said actually that number is so much higher than we originally let on. As a result, stock brokerage firms are desperately trying to buy back shares of Nextbridge Hydrocarbons to balance their books on the missing MMTLP dividends or the missing MMTLP shares. Adding saying that Nextbridge has proof that many times more shares were being shorted than FINRA states in the vast quantities being requested by short hedge funds and stock brokers, and obviously even attach that specific letter. So this letter is sent by Nextbridge Hydrocarbons to FINRA, saying, Mr. Colby, Nextbridge Hydrocarbons has been gathering a significant amount of data regarding the imbalance in our shareholder ledger. As stated in our press release, the very early results of our data gathering suggests a number considerably higher than the 2.65 million shares of aggregate short interest stated in FINRA's most recent FAQ saying the investment banking firm representing Nextbridge has received several inbound calls from financial institutions needing to buy our shares to get their books to balance. One of the inquiries was of a size so large that I requested to be on a call with this group. From this call, I now have knowledge of an admitted shareholder imbalance from one single financial institution that is multiples more than 2.65 million shares. So basically what this is saying is FINRA has said from all hedge funds, market makers, data providers, brokers, institutions, and everyone, there was 2.65 million shorted shares. But actually one individual hedge fund has approached Nextbridge Hydrocarbons to buy back multiples more than 2.65 million on their own saying there is a significant disconnect between our growing data and FINRA's stated number of 2.65 million shares of outstanding short interest, saying I believe this highlights the need for a more exhaustive review of the total shares in all accounts through all categories of a security long or short, onshore or offshore, and by parties registered with FINRA or not registered. So it seems like Nextbridge Hydrocarbons has the big smoking gun of synthetic share proof and is now exposing FINRA and how they're lying and manipulating the short interest figure. This is quite literally that smoking gun we've all been waiting for. I also wanted to go through today's fast moving momentum news play on ZVSA, which ran for 57% gains. Tony for one absolutely smashed it, locking in a 56.6% .6 gain, nearly almost the entire move. So you can see here in the pre-market, I said ZVSA could be of interest if we can get back over $1.59 per share. I've set my price alerts for the 159 breakout. Tony waited for that 159 breakout when the market opened, jumping on the trade and riding it all the way up to $2.50. You can see Tony actually got in a smidge early, buying before that breakout point, setting his price alert slightly lower at $1.43. So guys, be sure to join the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group using the link in the description below so that you too can capitalize on trades like these gaining 56% every single day.
And as Jason Sanders has tweeted, he says it seems FINRA is already trying to desperately backtrack their figure of 2.65 million shares. He's tweeted saying backpedaling. Now that 2.65 million shares short is just simply an estimate of the aggregate short interest position, not an accurate number whatsoever. It also seems like FINRA is trying to pull a quick switcheroo on the estimated number of shorted shares by saying, Dear Mr. McCabe, please can you provide us with proof of exactly how many shares are shorted so we can compare this to our estimated non-final figure and see if we can reach an agreed upon figure or see if we can change our figure to match yours saying for a constructive conversation at our meeting, please provide us in advance any specific information you have regarding the names of the financial institutions referenced in your letter and the size and location of the referenced short positions. We'll then analyze this proof you provide to us and compare it to our estimated non-final short interest position, which could change. AK FINRA just want MMTLP and Nextbridge to tell them how many shares are really shorted so they can say, aha, yep, yeah, we were just about to change our figure to exactly the figure you have, so therefore clearly we're right and there's no synthetic shares. Even though clearly FINRA have zero clue of how many shares exist and how many shorts exist and how many synthetics exist as well. Which, for a quick reference, seems to be tons of synthetic shares. And you may have also seen this very interesting news article posted on the NASDAQ website about how MetaMaterials MMAT's price target has been increased by 9,900%. The price target for MMAT has been revised to an average target of $137 per share, or an increase of 4,327% from the last reported closing price. AK, someone is expecting MMAT to increase by like 40 times its current value, or is expecting an MMAT squeeze. Kristen has also tweeted saying FINRA's former head of enforcement says the agency appears more focused on member relations than actual retail investor protection, saying the amount of FINRA disciplinary actions have declined dramatically over the last decade. So much so that lawyers who previously served with the industry's self-regulatory organisation are ringing alarm bells. The number of settlement letters that FINRA posts has decreased by almost 70% to just 428 issuances per year. So this is suggesting that FINRA is investigating 70% less crimes than they previously did back in 2013. Surely you should expect with more trading volume, more hedge funds, more shares being traded, more cash in the stock market and more inflation, that there will be more crimes and not 70% less crimes, especially with the massive increase in technology and number of retail shareholders trading, there should be way more crime, not way less crime. Or maybe more than likely, FINRA is just ignoring the crime that definitely still exists. And that lawyer says that FINRA is also solely focused on the low-hanging fruit, aka the easy wins. Instead of going after the big hedge funds committing billions if not trillions of dollars of fraud and trying to hide and cover up that fraud, they're going after the one individual Ponzi scheme, stealing a million dollars or so in plain view. They're going after the small, tiny, easy win cases and not the difficult stuff. They're simply ignoring all of that crime. Now, Biggums has also tweeted about how Jamie Dimon himself, the CEO and chairman of JP Morgan, is now selling shares as well. First, it was Bill Gates, then Tommy Tuberville, the politician, then Jeff Bezos, then Mark Zuckerberg, and now Jamie Dimon. Jamie Dimon has been CEO since 2006, and this is his first ever sale of company shares, dumping 125 million shares yesterday alone. His first ever sale in nearly 20 years, and he's dumping 125 million shares in one day. At the same time, many other billionaires are selling out as well. And again, that's not even it. Special Situations has also tweeted about the Walton family, who owns Walmart, selling $4.5 billion worth of shares as well. Jim, Alice and Rob Walton all sold about $1.5 billion each after earnings. 
So again, another billionaire or billionaires selling off shares last week on the 21st of February. It seems really now that billionaires are selling out of shares left, right and centre. It's not just one individual trimming a small tiny portion of their shares. It's billionaires like Bill Gates and Tommy Chiberville selling everything. And finally, Game of Trades has tweeted about a recession or a soft landing, saying this is the most important question in 2024. As you can see from this chart, consensus of a soft landing is at an all-time high. The only time people have been more certain of a soft landing was back in 2007, 2008 and the year 2000 before that. Which, by the way, quick reminder, a soft landing did not happen in either 2008 or 2000 at the dot. It seems the mainstream media, these news outlets and these analysts are telling you a soft landing is guaranteed, all while the billionaires are doing the complete opposite, thumping off their portfolios. And it's likely because these hedge funds, institutions and billionaires need you to buy the shares from them. They need to sell the shares, but they need someone to buy. So they need to convince someone or some people out there that now is the best time to buy stocks because a soft landing is guaranteed. When in reality, a soft landing seemingly is not guaranteed and they're desperate to bail out of their shares before the crash hits. So guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.